हेलो वेलकम डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह दिस साइड टुडे इन यूनिट 19 वेरियर एल्विन जीएस एस पर्सपेक्टिव ऑन ट्राइब लेट अस कंक्लूड द लेसन इन दिस लेक्चर टुडे ऑल ट्राइबल पीपल आर नॉट फॉरेस्ट डवेलर्स दे आर अ माइक्रो कॉस ऑफ द माइक्रो कॉस दैट इज इंडिया डी डी कोसाम्बी हैज डिस्क्राइब्ड द लार्जर सोशल कंटेक्सट इन विच द ट्राइबल पीपल आर लोकेटेड इन इंडिया कल्चरल डिफ्रेंस इज बिटवीन इंडियन इवन इन द सेम प्रोविंस डिस्ट्रिक्ट और सिटी आर एज वाइज एज द फिजिकल डिफ्रेंस इज बिटवीन वेरियस पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री मॉडर्न इंडिया प्रोड्यूस्ड एन आउट स्टैंडिंग फिगर ऑफ वर्ल्ड लिटरेचर इन टैगोर within as easy reach of tagore's final residence may be found other illiterate primitive people still unaware of tagore's existence some of them are hardly out of the food gathering stage an imposing modern city building such as the bank government office factories or scientific institute may have been designed by some european architect or by his indian people the rest workmen who actually build it generally use the crudest tool the very idea of science is beyond the mental reach of human being who have lived in misery on the margin of over cultivated lands or in the forest most of them have been driven by famine conditions in the jungle to become the cheapest form of the drug labor in city protection under the 5th and the 6th schedule seeks to safeguard forest dwellers right as citizens of india the totality of rights that individual citizen derive from description of sovereignty of the indian nation state these derive subsistence from the land acquisition act of 1894 the rights of the citizen cannot transgress the rights that the sovereign state has over the citizen in other words the powers to direct its social and cultural rights make the state sovereign and an individual its citizen the act of 1894 prevents in the way of creation of appropriate conditions for instance land acquired under this in most cases people commons in the way cultural rights are annulled for the commons are not only replicable reserves for materials necessary for subsistence they are also inscribed with a set of meanings which replace the processes of social and cultural reproduction secret groves grazing grounds waterways rivers hills are the some instances of such commons a question arises here what cultural rights remain when the rights to commons is always under threat of being alienated and what is the significance of these remaining cultural rights for the political rights this is described in the constitution under articles on fundamental rights these are derived from the way the indian nation state is defined article this definition provides legitimacy to the act of 1894 and this act is in turn executes one aspect of this definition namely territorial unity and sovereignty over the geographical area which is also the territory over which the state has its jurisdiction in other words this act shows the character uniformity this is that is it allows differences only in so far as it does not undermine uniformity the land acquisition act of 1894 is crucial while on the one hand the act is premised on a notion of good defined as public interest on the other hand 
it is itself the premise of a particular interpretation of nation state and of who is a citizen according to the 8th report of the standing committee on urban and rural development 1994-95 of the 10th lok sabha on the land acquisition act 1894 for the acquisition of land needed for public purpose developmental work and public institution and for determining the amount of compensation to be made on account of acquisition the first land acquisition act was promulgated on the first day of march 1894 however it has been amended for time to time to suit the needs of the post independence era it extends to the whole of the india except the state of jammu and kashmir while in nagaland the assembly has not adopted it for its empowerment in the state the land acquisition act requires people to sacrifice land for the sake of the well-being of the collective accordingly territoriality which is what makes the nation state is to be understood as that area protected by the state machinery over which the state has sovereign rights in the name of public good and the state's exercise of this right is sanctioned by the land acquisition act of 1894 in other words a citizen is one from whom land can be taken and to whom land can be given this is an obligation and a duty of being born within the boundaries of the nation state The 1894 Land Acquisition Act created a political environment that transformed the cultural and social processes of acculturation of forest dwellers into a political arena. This act is of crucial importance for defining the nation state as a territorial unit. Accordingly, a nation state covers contiguous geographical area over which it has control within this territory the government has the right to take any land for the sake of public interest provided it gives equivalent compensation this the declaration of area inhabited by the forest dwellers as protected area the declaration that all forest that does not yield revenue is waste land and the promotion of the permanent settlement for encouraging low settled cultivation in place of shifting cultivation are instances of the political activities encouraged by 1894 land acquisition act a more telling examples of the conflict of the political and the cultural is the land acquisition act of 1894 public interest which this act seeks to uphold is defined very clearly in schedule of the constitution the land acquired for the activities listed in the schedule have more often than not been common or common property for a particular common or a group of people here there are two nations of good one defined by state and the other defined by the commonly the identity of the nation state is premised on sacrifice of cultural rights of commonly for the sake of constitution a political entity the nation state however for the standpoint of commonly recognized rights in commons it can be argued that political identity of a nation's state stands firm provided commons and community rights or cultural rights are strengthened and diversified historical experience has shown that the list of activities in fact have done more harm than good to people at large in the light of this experience it can be argued that the identity of nation state which is expressed through the land acquisition act 1894 and which this act seeks to strengthen in fact to produce its result to the contrary it corrodes the ground on which a nation state stands this ground is its people 
their culture and their community. It is therefore necessary to re-examine the Act of 1894 such that it becomes possible to create conditions for the political and cultural nation of good to define complementary political and cultural rights. One way is to see that cultural rights become the basis for political rights. So far political rights has determined cultural rights. It is a necessary condition for self-rule. The unfolding of these assumptions and implications of the 1894 Act took place right through the nationalist struggle, though the Constituent Assembly debates up to the present time. Right through this unfolding, the cultural notion of good was subservient to the political notion. Power is a function of meaningfulness. Ideas are meaningful only when they generate a sense of certitude. To demonstrate the ground assumption, it will suffice to say that in article of the Constitution of India, tribes are not even mentioned in the list of people of India. They are clubbed as minorities. Further, Article 2531 25 to read in this subsequence suggest all minorities whether based on religion or language shall have the right to establish and administer educational institution of their choice however on the one hand nothing prevents the state from regulating or restricting any economic financial or other secular activity which may be associated with religious practice. On the other hand, the state would provide the social welfare and reforms and throw open Hindu religious institution of public interest to all classes and sections. In other words, the Hindu religion is unquestioned. It serves public interest in the same way as acquisition of land by state serves public interest. It is therefore the norm that promotes public interest and is therefore the duty of the state to make it uniformly accessible. From here derives the content of the uniform civil code. In criticism of the tendency of the civil code towards Hindu normative order, it may be said that it partakes of the colonial asymmetry between the cultural and political aspect of right that these regions it overtook the relation between the religion and the work of culture and that instead of facilitating a process of exchange and cooperation to generate a civil society where a plurality of cultural and social traditions are coextensive with political and economic inequality on the contrary it is accentuate differences and generates conditions of violence and terror in social lives of people. The problem is what social arrangement enable the emergence of such cultural norms that would promote cooperation and exchange amongst people who by the logic of the social position they occupy are torn apart by conflicting forces that emanate from cultural and social differences in a politically and an economically unequal world. Such social arrangements are an important part of the structure of civil society. Here we want to close this lecture and we have come to the end of the unit. Thanks for listening.